what I'm trying to figure out here essentially is how much of my cast drawing is going to actually be covered in graphite. So what areas am I going to be putting actual value on and what areas are going to be remaining behind as the paper. So when we get down to an area like this, this question becomes very vital, right? Because uh, in a passage like this, it's my assertion, I don't think I'm gonna be using any white chalk. When I compare the lightest areas of this passage down here, uh, to say the brightest areas of the center light, uh, I see them as being several steps off of each other. But what I have that is different in between the cast and, and what I have here, of course, is that value of the paper. I need to find out like where that exists in the actual cast itself, like what parts of the cast are gonna be represented by that. So that's the question I'm trying to answer. And what we're gonna be working on this stage is incrementally bringing our drawing a little bit closer to the kind of squinting impression that we get when we look at this actual source image or we look at our cast in nature, right? Eventually we want a great degree of fidelity in between the two. Squint down and look at your drawing, squint down and look at your source image. Those two should have a very similar impression. Areas within the darks should blend and bond together just as they do in the source image if we're doing our job correctly. If you take a look, for instance, at these areas of shadow, uh, the cast shadow that this cast is casting onto the wall it's hanging on, I want you to look really closely at that right now when I switch back and forth, right? Notice in this stage, what's happening is I'm choosing the darkest areas and I'm unifying the rest of the value to that. This is just one stop on the road through, through many different stages that we're gonna go through where areas like this are gonna get more and more and more even in tone. When I'm darkening this down, I'm probably using my 4B pencil. That's what I started out the drawing with and that's what I've used to indicate some of the darkest values so far. There will come a point, however, where the 4B isn't really getting into the holes of the paper. It's really just gonna be burnishing the graphite that's already on top. And I'm gonna to switch to a slightly harder pencil to go in and kind of fill all the individual holes inside that value. And that's gonna add another layer of like evenness of tone and richness, right? And I'm not gonna do that all in one pass. I'm gonna do that progressively, trying to keep the entire drawing together at all times. Let's take a look at, at just this area quite specifically, right? I'm going to reiterate the shadow edges, specifically the form shadow edges, but also the cast shadow edges. Take a look at this area of the, of the cast, and this is a stage that you're gonna go through that's really, really important, right? Take a look what, at what is happening there. What I'm doing is I'm adding a concentration of value, and let's call it an edge, right? We're concentrating an edge of the shadow uh, through here reiterating those shapes is going to be a way that we ensure that we don't pass through this area where we, we lose the drawing. Think about how dark the halftones are gonna become just through here, right? If I leave behind just an edge like this one and I add sufficient halftone to this light shape, I'm really gonna lose the sense of where that boundary is. I know, however, looking at my source image here, that that boundary is actually important. It shows where the hair is turning forward and then turning under. That's indicating a major plane shift. And if I lose that, I'm gonna lose my ability to compare shapes in that area. I'm gonna lose the, the sense of like volume in that area, the sense of roundness, the sense of reality, realism even is going to be diminished. We're gonna go back to a flat, mushy, muddy drawing. And so this passage where I'm going through and kind of reiterating is a big part of avoiding that specific pitfall. When we start out creating halftone, what we wanna do is do as much big form modeling as possible, which means let's take the entirety of the forehead, right? And you can notice in this forehead, this theme of a kind of a curving kind of arcing space. We know that the center light is through here. Uh, and as we get further to the right and further to the left of that, we're getting a little bit darker. It's not totally even from top to bottom either. We can notice that the top of course contains the center light and is lighter. As we get further down here, what's happening is we're turning a little bit. We're turning a little bit away from the light as we get further down on that plane. Uh, so big form modeling would constitute adding the darker values at the sides appropriate to kind of how it's appearing in nature before getting into all of the micro forms that are taking place inside those bigger turning forms. So 
everything that we're doing like on the cast at the moment, we're, we're going to try to model the biggest forms possible. If you take a look at this passage here, uh, I'm also kind of almost uniformly glazing down this, right? Uh, so understanding that, that, that this area that we're looking at here in no way is flat, right? If we were to turn that cast upward, we'd see that big sense of volume from, from right to left, and that's what I'm trying to indicate. We find that there are a few major areas where we can say there is enough light value to actually have white chalk. Now, eventually in the long run, there's going to be a couple little passages through here, a couple hard turns in the form uh, that are going to merit a little bit of white chalk kind of jumping into them. But for the most part, we just have these three areas uh, that actually merit white chalk uh, in terms of the value scale of the drawing that we have overall. That's about as far as I thought I'd go. But I was looking at this cast, I'm drawing this cast, and I'm getting down here to this wonderful kind of beard and I'm adding all these values into it. And eventually I discovered there's this area right here where the form is turning so deeply, right? Turning upward so deeply into this crease in the form that's facing totally up, facing perfectly kind of vertical, right? That it gets enough light that I felt like, come on, this justifies a little bit of white chalk in that area, even if I know that, it, that it, it could be considered just a light area in an otherwise kind of darker zone. I could have darkened the halftones out here to kind of impress this effect without white chalk, but I just felt like there was a, there was a moment there. Not a dramatic amount of change, but a lot just, you know, filling in sort of smaller forms. I want you to take a look at an area like this. Let's even zoom in further and say an area like this one. Right. And between the last stage and this stage, you start to see a lot more individual forms being modeled in there, a lot more complexity to those forms. This is hard drawing. This is what I consider to be difficult, challenging drawing, painstaking drawing, that you can work on something for 30 minutes and not really notice that you've done a whole heck of a lot, right? The point I'm trying to make about this is this is the time at which I find it most useful to work on the smallest forms inside of a drawing. Everything else that you're doing should be as much as possible oriented towards big form modeling. Here we have essentially the finished drawing, right? You can see the values are much more enriched. The half tones are, are worked on a lot further. There's an increasing sense of detail. The forms are, are turning more crisply, right? Even areas that looked relatively finished in the last stage now have taken on a slightly more refined appearance. Uh, it's just a little bit of change, a little bit of refinement everywhere. 